in year six, it's my turn for the next instalment of the jam donut that ruined my life. We're about halfway through, so we're doing really well. Um, the next section of the book is called Wednesday. At school, I give a guinea pig a makeover and my teacher has a breakdown. The next day, I took my £20 to Mrs McDonald. She was still cross from the day before, so she put it in her desk drawer without looking at me. She spent the whole morning pushing Mr Wiggles round in his exercise ball and ignoring us while we did boring maths worksheets. At lunchtime, Gamble and I had our detention. As soon as everyone else had gone outside, Mrs MacDonald brought her shredding machine out of the big walk-in cupboard in the corner of the classroom. She plonked it down on my table along with a massive stack of old paper. Shred that, she said flatly. I'll use it as bedding for Mr Wiggles. What should I do, miss? Should I shred stuff too? asked Gamble. You know you're not allowed near sharp objects, Darren, she replied. Not after what happened with those knitting needles. Gamble sniffed. That was an accident. And anyway, how was I supposed to know those year one kids would get in my way? Hmm, said Mrs MacDonald. I'm off to prepare Mr Wiggles his salad. Miss Clegg will look after you while I'm gone. Miss Clegg rolled her eyes. Jane was also in the classroom, along with Rosie. They were designing posters to advertise auditions for people to perform at the old people's tea party. Rosie was so delighted about me being in trouble that I thought she might actually explode. As soon as Mrs MacDonald had gone, Miss Clegg stood up. I'm off to the toilet, she yelled. No talking. And away she went. We were alone. I fed the first sheet of paper into the top of the shredding machine. There was a loud whirring noise as the sharp metal teeth of the shredder pulled the paper down, chewed it up and spat the bits into the box underneath. It was brilliant fun. I did another and another and another. It didn't feel like a punishment at all. In fact, it was the most fun I'd had since before the doughnut disaster at the aquarium. Can I ever go? said Gamble. No, I said. We're already in enough trouble. Plus I'm enjoying it too much, I thought. Gamble stood there for a moment, looking about and twitching. Then, without warning, he scrambled up onto the sink, his feet inches from the guinea pig cage. "'What are you doing?' I asked. "'You'll knock Mr Wiggles onto the floor!' Gamble was standing right in front of the cupboard, so he had to bend down in order to open the door past his head. "'I'm getting my doughnut back,' he said. "'Me and Scratchy enjoyed the ones you gave us yesterday.' From my seat, I could see that the gift bag with the half doughnut inside was right at the back of the cupboard, behind the powder paints. A very uneasy feeling started building in my stomach as Gamble reached into the cupboard. The cage was right beneath the cupboard door, so Gamble had to stand to the side of it and stretch across on his tiptoes, feeling for the doughnut with his fingertips. "'I'll tell,' said Rosie. "'Oh, shut it, you sweaty butt waffle,' said Gamble over his shoulder." Rosie's mouth opened and closed a few times like a fish. But waffle? I wasn't quite sure what that meant, but nonetheless, I think it described Rosie pretty well. Yeah, butt out, butt waffle, said Jane. Then she smiled at Gamble, who was now teetering dangerously over the cage. Please can I have a bit too, Darren? Unbelievable. Jane had turned bad and desperate. After all, that was the donut Gamble had put in his armpit. She was starting to give me the creeps a little bit. Got it, cried Gamble joyfully. Yes, hissed Jane. Then everything went wrong. You know when people talk about things happening in slow motion? Well, that's exactly what happened right then. The next three seconds seemed to last a lifetime. Gamble pulled the gift bag towards him. And his sleeve caught a small pot of blue powder paint, which slipped off the shelf and somersaulted through the air for what felt like hours, before landing upside down on top of the cage and releasing a massive blue cloud, which slowly settled on top of Mr Wiggles. This was not good. With the gift bag swinging in his hand, Gamble hopped down to the floor and peered in at Mr Wiggles. Whoops, he said. I rushed over to the guinea pig cage. Whoops, I said incredulously. Whoops! Is that all you can say? Darren, the guinea pig is blue. I'm going to find Mrs MacDonald. You're all getting done. This is great, said Rosie, skipping out of the room with a flick of her hair. Oh no, cried Jane. Please, Roman, tell Mrs MacDonald it was nothing to do with me. My parents are so strict, they'll kill me and... Jane began to cry. Gamble suddenly became calm and businesslike. I guess he'd been in a lot of sticky situations before. Right, you. Stop blubbing he said to Jane. 
Go and find Mrs MacDonald and stall her. Jane nodded meekly and did as she was told. Gamble pulled out the doughnut and threw the gift bag to one side. And you help me sort your mess out. I peered into the cage. My mess? Gamble shrugged. Your doughnut? But, no buts, said Gamble. Lucky I'm here to help. Before I could argue with him, he ripped off a chunk of doughnut and then opened the cage, lifted Mr Wiggles up and set him on the palm of his hand. The guinea pig gobbled up its snack hungrily. Don't give him more, I said. We're already in trouble for feeding him. That's why we're in detention. My uncle always says, sometimes you've got to break a few little laws to get away with breaking the big ones, said Gamble, grinning. I didn't really want to know any more about Gamble's uncle, but I guess I could see his point. At least the doughnut was keeping Mr Wiggles still while we thought of something to do about his blue fur. Gamble nodded towards the little silver comb that was next to the cage. I picked it up and carefully brushed as much of the paint as possible out of Mr Wiggles' coat. It helped, but there was a big patch on his back where the powder was tangled right down to his, chi- to his skin. Gamble placed Mr Wiggles onto the draining board and examined him. Think she'll notice? I looked at him in amazement. Darren, I said. He's got a bright blue Mohican. Cool. Guinea pig punk, he grinned. We can pierce its nose too. I'll get the staple gun. Don't you dare, I warned him. I wasn't sure if he was joking or not. Mr Wiggles was wriggling about impatiently, so Gamble broke him off another piece of doughnut. Hey, he said. Did you see that squidgy splodge? That squidgy squidge are running a competition? I noticed on that tray you had in your house and I saw a poster when I nicked off school last week. I sighed. Gamble's like this all the time. He has the attention span of a caterpillar. I know, but there's no point. It's a big swizz. And anyway, this isn't the time. We've got about one minute to figure out how we're going to clean the paint off this rodent. Easy, said Gamble. We can lick it off him. I eat paint all the time. Before I could stop him, Gamble's face was was hovering above Mr Wiggle's back, his tongue hanging out. I managed to stop him just in time. What a complete maniac. I mean, the paint was bad enough, but what would Mrs MacDonald do if she found us licking her pet guinea pig? There's got to be something else we can try, I said. There's a dishwasher in a staff room, said Gamble. He sounded completely serious. This can't be happening, I said. We could give it a haircut, said Gamble. And how will we explain that to Mrs MacDonald? Say say it got a shock and its hair all fell out, he said. Do you have any better ideas? Well, I thought... Perhaps if we only trim off the blue bits. You'll have to do it though, said Gamble. I'm not allowed to use scissors. Not being allowed to do something had never seemed to hold Gamble back before, but it was probably for the best if I took charge. I took a pair of scissors from the block by the sink. As carefully as I could, I held a lock of fur on Mr Wiggle's back and snipped. A blue-white wisp fell away. Good, I thought. Maybe this could work. I took a deep breath and trimmed a bit more. And a bit more. And a bit more. Then I stood back and admired my handiwork. Well, I had managed to get rid of all the blue paint, but then again... He looks like a monk, said Gamble. He was right. There was a large hairless circle in the middle of Mr Wiggle's back. This is really bad, I said. We could give it a comb over, said Gamble. You just brush the hair over the board patch. My dad does it. Your dad's a human, I said. Although looking at Gamble, I realised that might not necessarily be the case. Fine, said Gamble. Looks like it's down to me to save the day. Again, give the scissors here. Then, with absolutely no precision or control, he started snip, snip, snipping away at poor Mr Wiggles, who calmly stood there, munching more and more doughnut from Gamble's other hand. I I couldn't see anything until finally Gamble stood back to admire his work. Cor, he exclaimed. She was right about him being fat. I put my hand in front of my mouth. It was now clear why Gamble was banned from using scissors. It's official, I said. We're dead. Rubbish! We got off, we got rid of all the paint. This was true. There wasn't even a single speck of blue paint left on the guinea pig. Unfortunately, there was, there was no white hair left on him either. Mr Wiggles was completely and utterly bald. He looked like a miniature hippo. All that's left are his whiskers, I said sadly. Oh yeah, you're right, said Gamble. And with two quick snips, he took them off as well. Stop it, I said, snatching the scissors out of his hand. You've ruined Mr Wiggles. Gamble screwed up his face. You know, you might be right. I reckon Mrs Macdonald probably preferred him hairy. 
I wrung my hands together. This is really bad. We'll own up and take our punishment and then... Don't be thick, said Gamble, punching me in the shoulder. No way I'm letting my best mate get in trouble. Let's get some glue. Glue? Gamble plonked Mr Wiggles down on the side and grabbed a pot of PVA out of the cupboard. Yep, we we'll spread glue all over his back, then roll him in the white hair. She'll never know the difference. He's a guinea pig, I said, not a coconut macaroon. At that moment, Rosie Taylor appeared at the door. Just thought I'd let you know. Mrs MacDonald's on her way, she said, a big smarmy grin across her face. And trending on Twitter at the moment? You two getting done. With an evil snigger, she swept back outside. And so the worst plan in the history of the world quickly took shape. Two guilty monkeys. I swear Rosie Taylor had never looked so pleased as when she returned with Mrs MacDonald a minute later. A minute later. Jane Dixon was behind them, her face pale. Gamble and I stood to attention next to each other, blocking off Mr Wiggles' cage. Hi, miss, said Gamble, hiding the glue pot behind his back. We both smiled as innocently as we could. Mrs MacDonald frowned. Why are you two grinning like that? You look like two guilty monkeys. More like a pair of serial killers, yawned Mrs Clegg, lolloping out into the room. Weren't you supposed to be watched, began Mrs MacDonald, but Miss Clegg interrupted her. Needed the loo. Curry last night, she said, wafting her hand up and down. Ugh, TMG, said Rosie. Too much grim formation. Miss, said Jane, please can we go somewhere else and talk about the old people's tea party? What's that by the sink, said Mrs MacDonald. I felt the sweat on my neck turn cold. Donut, miss, said Gamble casually. Guess what? There's a competition, right? And I'm going to win a year's supply and share it with you, miss, because I love you, miss. Very kind of you, Darren, but th what's the doughnut doing there? Mrs MacDonald said. Her eyes narrowed. Did you take it out of the cupboard? I thought I told you. She stalked towards us like a hungry leopard. Gamble and I huddled closer together. It felt like a cold fist was twisting my intestines. Don't worry, miss, said Gamble calmly. We saved you a bit. Look. He thrust the well-nibbled doughnut under Miss McDon Mrs MacDonald's nose and she snatched it off him. I'm not interested in... She'd seen Mr Wiggles. Mrs MacDonald flung the lump of doughnut onto the worktop and shoved past me and Gamble. Then she pu pulled open the cage door and scooped the guinea pig up. What have you done? she yelled. Her face had actually turned purple and her eyes were bulging out like ping pong balls. Don't know what you're talking about, miss, said Gamble innocently. Mrs MacDonald was panting heavily. Her free hand gripped the sink for support. He's... He's... Shall I get you the behaviour book, miss? said Rosie Taylor. Mrs MacDonald let out a howl from somewhere deep in her chest. Gamble looked surprised. Are you angry, miss? I could see where she was coming from. Mr Wiggles was bald, which was bad enough, but on his skin were random patches of stuck-on hair and crusty bits of glue. Unfortunately, he'd also stuck to some pencil shavings, some glitter and a few crumbs of doughnut along the way, as well as a couple of pink feathers that Gamble thought might look nice. He looked like he'd just had a fight with the art cupboard. What have you done? screamed Mrs MacDonald again. I looked at my shoes. I'm sorry. Mrs MacDonald placed Mr Wiggles down next to the sink. Sorry? Sorry? He's ruined! I'll be the laughing stock of the British Championships. You could get him to wear a wig, miss, said Gamble helpfully. And on that note, I'm going to leave it. Very eventful, some very strange things happening now. I hope you're enjoying it. See you all soon. Bye.